Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm here with Tihomir Lazic. He is from Serbia, but he lives in England at this moment. And I'm glad to have him here because uh, he is a guy who studied at Oxford, which is kind of cool. Uh, he, he defended his doctorate there and his expertise are contemporary theology and philosophy, right? Yes. Okay, so I want to ask you a few, few questions today. Uh, yesterday we've been talking about w worldviews. And uh, I think it's kind of an interesting topic. So what are the challenges for uh, somebody who's in, who's in a search for a great, greater purpose? Yes, I think there is uh, this quest for meaning is especially hard in 21st century because of globalization. And there is such a big mixture of different cultures, different worldviews, different explanations of reality. Previously, people live within one country. They rarely travel, traveled and they had certain way of seeing reality and acting in this reality. Certain important things for them uh, were defined by society and and they were part of single worldview. And now that we have this globalization, suddenly there is this overflow of different and mixture of different uh, possible interpretation of reality. So navigating your way through that when worldviews are in conflict is actually uh, one of the biggest, biggest challenges today. You are so in, so to say, the market of ideas. So you need to buy some ideas for yourself and in your attempt to make sense of reality. That's the challenge, the multiplicity of worldviews. Okay, how would you define worldview? Okay, how would I define the worldview? Yeah. Worldview is a very interesting concept. Um, technically, this is, in, in short, this is the lenses through which you interpret reality, through which you see reality. Or it can be some kind of a mind map or a construct uh, which mirrors the world around us. Um, to use more technical definition, I'll use the definition of James Sire, who maybe 30 years ago when he wrote his famous book, The Catalog of Worldviews, he defined the worldview as a set of assumptions or a set of propositions about the basic makeup of the universe. So there's a certain set of beliefs and assumptions, axioms that we accept as true about our reality. The combination of all of those form the worldview through which we see and interpret reality. Okay, so uh, everybody has a different kind of worldview. Uh, do you have multiple worldviews, right? Yes, there's also possible to have this kind of mixed worldview of your own, okay. yet all of the worldviews, no matter how original we think we are, we are still sharing in some major outlooks at reality. There's certain underlying like structures that are that we have in common with the rest of humanity. Okay, do you think are, are there bad worldviews and good worldviews? Well, I think there can be some worldviews which are not explaining reality accurately. So definitely there can be a false ones. And once we progress in, let's say, science and knowledge of reality, those, those worldviews cannot hold water anymore. So I think that there are some worldviews which, has, which have better explanatory power for reality. So, so why is it important to choose the right one? Okay, so worldview is important because technically it creates, the, it, it gives us this, as I said, explanatory, uh, explains reality for us. It helps us make sense of it. If our worldview has a lot of contradictions and a lot of inconsistencies and it's not really thought through, somehow we'll feel this dissonance. We'll feel the sense of lostness, the sense of lack of meaning, and uh, we will not have the basic orientation in reality. Also, kind of the second role of a worldview, so to say, is to give this kind of emotional stability. If, thing, if things are just a process of a random play of different factors in universe, and like if you live this in uh, arbitrary reality where we're constantly surprised and there is no cause and effect and certain patterns, we will feel completely lost and emotionally we will not be able to keep our sanity. Mm -hmm. And then, will you also help us to make our own judgments about reality? It has this uh, role of evaluation or evaluating the reality. So we know what's important, what is not, what's worth investing our time in, what's not, and so on. And also help us monitor the change. We, as we grow as individuals, there are certain constants that we keep from our past, certain core that remains us. Yet we are constantly adjusting and maturing and so on. So worldview helps you monitor what's changed, what stays, what's essential, what's not essential. So it technically it provides the platform for living. You know, it's, it's what Socrates would say, this is the examine life. If you're aware of your worldview, if you are properly articulating it, it does explain reality better. And you're not li living haphazardly, ad hoc lives in reactions to something, to the unknown factors, but you are, you are finding a better place under the sun. You, you, it can help you in your search for meaning and for more as your quest uh, 
project aims to help people achieve their best mm -hmm. and to make sense of reality and to find their purpose. I think knowing how the worldviews function and what they are and being intentional about developing your own worldview uh, is one of the key ingredients and key steps in your journey towards meaning. Okay. Um, when I listen to debates between um, like maybe people who believe in a divine being and atheists, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, talk, they talk a lot, lot about this um, mm -hmm. because as you said, you are driven by something uh, when you believe in a divine being. And uh, if you're an atheist, you, you are driven by uh, something else which you define. Uh, so, so I have two questions. Is, is this topic popular only in the 21st century? Um, mm -hmm. Or people have been talking about this in history. Mm -hmm. And my second question is, um, you studied at Oxford. Mm -hmm. Okay. you you. You've seen many different people. You've seen mm -hmm. atheists and mm -hmm. Christians, and can you see the difference between, mm -hmm. uh, in a practical way, in their mm -hmm. worldviews? Yes. Okay. There is the general assumption that naturalistic worldview and scientific worldview is somehow factual and more solid, more reliable guide in reality. Guide, uh, guide in reality. And the idea that God exists with that the world exists without this ultimate power, God, is very popular as a kind of standard worldview. Yet what I notice in Oxford, there are many intelligent people like John Lennox, Alistair McGrath, even we had visitations from America, William Lane Craig and Ravi Zacharias and other apologies that uh, I happen to have privileges to listen from and to learn from them. Very intelligent people which kind of defeated this kind of assumptions that aha, being religion, religious means being irrational because you will use God only to fill in the gaps in your knowledge. So when you cannot explain certain things like rain, previously, previous cultures, you know, explain it by invoking the concept of um, deities and gods who are creating rain. And now we know, uh, faced with the facts of the science, now we know this is actually the process of condensation of water and so on. We can explain it physically, uh, finding the material cause behind rather than ultimate force. So technically what I saw is there are on both sides very intelligent people who are trying to see the world and explain the world and live in the world with completely different set of glasses. So in, in some sense I realized that, that every worldview is actually grounded in some faith belief or some kind of axiom, something that you cannot really prove completely. So you start with certain assumptions and then you build up the whole values from it and then you build the whole conceptual framework, your theory of life, so to say, and then this kind of help, uh, shapes your behaviors, your interactions with the rest of reality. So both of those worldviews are maturely developed, yet they all rest on, on faith. So no matter how factual you think science is, there is also a lot of things which hangs in the air, which is built on, on some assumption. At the same time, faith in God also requires certain assumptions. Now, there are ways of uh, dialoguing, there are ways of trying to compare them, and this is what the whole endeavor is there in academia, where world, there is an intense worldview clash. So your question was also regarding, is this a new debate, or is it there from before? I think since human be being, beings exist, we had different filters through they had different filters through which they saw the reality. So this is a very old debate, yet it has a new power recently with, with, with so many different options that we have available and very intelligent expositions of those options. The worldview itself as a concept actually comes from Immanuel Kant, uh, Weltanschauung, he defined it as a, you know, a vision of reality, uh, seeing the reality. Uh, yet this concept then later influenced social sciences, physical sciences, and so on, and philosophers. You know, big philosophers always de dealt with these big questions, worldview questions, you know. Where are we from? What's our destiny? What's human problem? What's the solution to this problem? How should we live? And these kind of huge, huge questions, that's part of worldview, uh, part of worldview Worldview's role is to explain reality and give answer to those key questions of life. Now, uh, there was also the influence of anthropology in the last few decades, who realized that worldview is not only some kind of philosophical explanation of reality, that there are some kind of precognitive factors, tacit factors, something which is preceding, or comes before the actual philosophical expression of it. They talk about worldview being also the commitments of heart and basic orientation of reality which can then be expressed 
uh, as in a set of assumptions. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of development in the last 20, 30 years, this more holistic approach to worldview was particularly there because of the influence of cultural anthropology. And James Sire, if you really follow his writings, a famous book about catalogues or worldviews where he kind of catalogues different versions of reality which are popular today and helps people navigate those and within, between those and find their own views. He first defined the worldview, as we said in the beginning, the set of assumptions or set of propositions about the basic makeup of the universe. Yet 30 years later, when he wrestled with this concept in the light of cultural anthropology and further insights of the science, he realized that this goes much deeper than our cognition. So then he reworked his, uh, his um, definition in a book called Naming the Elephant. And he worked the whole, uh, reworked the whole definition saying that worldview actually represents certain commitments, certain orientations and dispositions of your heart that can be expressed through propositions, that's the way, one way of expressing it, and through the narrative or certain kind of coherent story about reality and within which we then uh, live and we move and we find our being, you know. So technically, worldview reaches not only your heart, but your mind, as well as your behavior. It's almost like this cultural lens that you have, which somehow affects the whole human being and addresses the major questions. So my answer to your question, this was the debate since the beginning of humanity, yet suddenly, uh, after the last two, two, three centuries, we have certain, certain conceptual <coughs> tools and certain concepts that we develop that can help us be more systematic about it and possibly try to find our way bet between them. Um, and I, can, I think that at Oxford, that's what I experienced, people really building the whole constructions, architectures, the whole worldview very reasonably from the foundation, it's, and it's now measuring what has the greater explanatory power. And this was a whole debate. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then hit the subscribe button. Next week, I'm going to continue this conversation with Tihomir, and uh, he's going to speak about how to choose a valid worldview. So stay tuned and see you next week.